So after the news that Tesla has cut FSD to $99 per month, I conducted a poll on X a few minutes ago, so vote's still coming in. Check back in later throughout this video and see where things are at. But so far, strong indication, at least among predominantly Tesla shareholders, that the price change will create a meaningful increase in the number of people subscribing to Tesla FSD. Important caveat, as I said, it'll be interesting to see the results given my audience skews towards Tesla shareholders and many fanboys and fangirls, 10 out of 10 spelling on this post, by the way. Pro tip, at the end of my life, sitting on my rocking chair, looking back, the number of times I'm going to regret not spell checking and reviewing and double checking a post on X, zero. Got more important shit to do. I expect this poll will show existing FSD owners way above the average and also much higher number of new takers with the price change. A lot of people supporting the mission, supporting the company, invested in the stock, etc. So please don't assume this represents the general public. That being said, if we remove the people who just want to see the results, which is a quarter of the poll, and we normalize this, roughly half of the people who own a Tesla are now going to subscribe to FSD among my audience. Not far off double the number of people who'd already subscribed. So this is a big deal. Obviously, my audience skews a bit, so keep that in mind. But regardless, interesting signal. Let's see how this shakes out. Now, the reason that I'm starting the video with this, which again, we will check back on the results throughout the video, because I've only just posted this 12 minutes ago, apparently. Shitty bank cuts Tesla stock price target over delivery miss. This is going to be good. I think I should title this episode, Missing the Forest for the Trees. Tesla shares are off just about 1% today, extending what has been a sluggish start to the year for the EV maker. Tesla stock has actually fallen 30% since January 1st. You can see that decline on your screen. The moves have led several analysts to slash their price targets on the stock. City is the latest to cut its price target, lowering it to 180 bucks a share. Well, we've got the analyst behind that call. Itai Michele, a city's U.S. autos and auto parts analyst, is here to discuss some more. Itai, it's great to have you here. So, you so just for the record, Itai from Citibank, the guy we're currently hearing from, has been covering Tesla for a while. Not one buy rating ever. Not one. Tesla stock under $14 per share in May 2019. Sell. Now, I don't know why I'm sharing this. It's definitely not important context in terms of whether or not this guy historically has been on the mark with Tesla. He's totally credible because he's wearing a suit and he's in the finance media and he's talking about Tesla. So he must know what he's talking about. You just lowered your price target here for Tesla. The biggest concerns, challenges as to why you're seeing a bit of a more challenging road ahead for the company. Yeah, absolutely. So we did lower the price target in our earnings estimates to reflect the Q1 delivery miss and even some early data points we're seeing uh, in April. And, and so the, the challenges Tesla's faced recently uh, partly are, are actually the, the outcome of, of their success over the years that have created somewhat of a, of a saturated uh, effect on, on their vehicle sales in certain regions like here in the U.S. Of course, in China, we're seeing greater competition and the product age has also become an issue. I think the one lesson we've all learned in the past year or so is that some of the kind of age old rules of automotive uh, purchasing uh, are still very much alive and well in the EV era. And that is when you do have higher levels of saturation or when your product portfolio does age past a certain uh, point, even price cuts don't do quite so much to stimulate demand. These are solvable issues, but right. So a couple of things, an aging product lineup, which explains why <laughs> that product lineup includes the world's best selling vehicle. <laughs> I don't want to raid on e parade here, but What's currently occurring is an example of the cyclical nature of the entire automotive industry and sky high interest rates affecting everybody. No one seems to be discussing this. It's like, something's wrong with Tesla, 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 Tesla. Bro, are you not paying attention? Everyone is having a hard time selling vehicles. If I didn't know any better, I might think that Itai here thinks that electric vehicles are not going to become the dominant form of propulsion anytime soon. Right now, they are having a greater effect on Tesla than what we even expected uh, a few months ago. So we did lower our estimates uh, to reflect that, and, and that, of course, affected the price target as well. And Itai, you talk about potential disappointment disappointment for the upcoming robo-taxi unveiling, and this is kind of mirroring a cycle that we've started to see with Tesla, at least when we speak with analysts. They talk about how there's a little bit too much hype coming into these unveilings that end up being disappointing. Is this starting to become a pattern for them? Great question. We'll, we'll see it on, on August 8th. I mean, we do love the focus uh, they have on autonomous vehicles. We do think it is the, the most powerful mobility mega trend out there. Uh, so I don't want to interrupt too many times, but it's the same guy with a neutral price target on Tesla. In other words, perfectly priced today. Who's now talking about the fact that the autonomy is a big deal. Robotech is a big deal. Uh, not quite understanding the 
the logic and the connection here. I mean, call me crazy, but this guy seems to believe that Tesla's fairly valued at half a trillion bucks. How does he value Robotaxi and what probability does he assign? Uh, so we've been very bullish on autonomous. You know, there's really two scenarios that we kind of laid out for the August 8th event. One is kind of what you described, which is a bit of a similar event to what we saw from Tesla back in 2019 at Autonomy Day, where they reveal a robo taxi, but without much of a follow through for actual deployment uh, and strategy for how to take that to market in, in, in a reasonable amount of time. The, the second scenario, which would be, of course, more positive, is that we do see both the robo taxi, uh, where we actually think the company will highlight cost advantages and, and, and other kind of unique features. But on top of that, we would actually also get a lot of incremental information on the deployment strategy itself. All right, let me let me spoil the deployment strategy. You ready? <laughs> Wait for it. Tesla's existing fleet, six plus million vehicles. By the time this event happens, six and a half. Almost every single one of these will be capable in the future of operating as a robotaxi with an over-the-air software update. In addition, Tesla's obviously going to be producing a next-gen dedicated robotaxi on the new platform with a modular manufacturing system, which will dramatically lower the cost to produce vehicles, but more importantly, also dramatically lower the time it takes to produce them, which is super important. In other words, I make as many of these as fast as they can, as affordable as they can, and pump them out. Now, it's unknown as to whether or not Tesla will sell these vehicles, the dedicated robotaxis, to customers, to fleet owners, or decide, fuck it, we'll just keep them ourselves. After all, they'll cover their entire costs in year one, and it's pure profit. But more importantly, it's most in line with our mission, and this is important to understand. Tesla always tells us what they're going to do ahead of time explicitly or implicitly what's in their mission statement to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy now think about this if tesla sells robo taxis to customers to fleet operators they have less control over how often they're operating than if tesla retains these assets themselves now you'd assume a fleet owner would want these things on roads as much as possible to bring in as much profit revenue as possible but you never know the other challenge here is if tesla solves autonomy and by the way it's not really if it's when the value of a vehicle that can operate autonomously that has extremely low cost of operation, half a million, million mile battery, powertrain, and so on. Extremely low maintenance. The potential value, not cost to produce, but the value of this thing is just astronomical. I mean, how much would you pay for an asset that could bring 25,000, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a year in profits? I mean, 50 grand a year of profits may seem aggressive and bullish. If you guys are curious, check out my valuation model, my estimates on Tesla in bear case, space case, bull case. Join Patreon, the investor level and above link in the pinned comment or make your own but this is just a hypothetical imagine an asset that produces 50 grand a year because it's a nice round number if you paid a million dollars for that asset that'd be a five percent annual return if you paid half a million dollars that'd be a ten percent annual return most investors out there maybe not tesla investors but most investors out there will be very happy with a ten percent annual return if it was two hundred fifty thousand dollars it'd be a twenty percent return ridiculous so if tesla is to sell these vehicles to customers either the price of the vehicle or more likely the software is going to be astronomical because that will be what the market clearing price is. They're saying Tesla being greedy. This is the market pricing things accordingly. It's going to be pretty wild times. So Tesla's strategy is to enable its existing fleet to work as robot taxis with the over their software update. And in addition, to produce as many of their new vehicles as affordably and more importantly, as quickly as possible to deploy them as dedicated robot taxis. That's what I believe we'll hear when the robot taxi is unveiled, which I think at least one version, but most likely the primary, if only version we see unveiled, is going to be a two-seater. Why? Because that covers most trips. And what about the people where there's more than two passengers required? Obviously, over the long term, Tesla's probably going to make a van-like solution as well that maybe carry six, eight, 12 plus passengers. Rest in peace, public transportation. But for those trips that need three, four, five plus passengers, guess what? Tesla's already got a fleet of millions of vehicles on roads. So don't be surprised if what we see, at least the flagship robotaxi model, if not the only one we see unveiled is a two-seater. The icing on the cake, the cherry on top, would be if Tesla also unveils a much higher density, like I said, six, eight, 10, 12-seater as well. But this will cover all bases. Combination of their existing fleet, some of these operating as robot taxis, plus a dedicated two-seater, plus a high-density one, done. Massive disruption. Uh, not only on the AV tech itself, but how they're thinking about deploying this uh, from, from a mobility and ride share uh, network. And there's actually a lot of opportunities we've, we've written about in the past for them to deploy, maybe not so much in the densest urban uh, centers that, that, that other companies are, are competing in today, but in other domains where very powerful business models can still be built upon. So we'll see what happens on August 8th. But for us, the focus is, of course, on the robo taxi itself, the unit economics, but more importantly, on the, the path for deployment, the strategy for deployment, 
And if we can come out of there convinced that there is a path to deploy, uh, maybe a differentiated path to deploy and build a network effect, uh, that could become uh, more of a positive versus what we saw in the past. What, what about the broader uh, AV landscape here when it comes to some of the other players within the space? The fact that Tesla is focusing on the robotaxi, is focusing on AV, is that largely view, viewed potentially as a driver for some of the other names? We do think that the industry will uh, adopt uh, much higher degrees of autonomy going forward, right? There's a lot of benefits, not only from a revenue stream perspective, new revenue streams, new business models, but even just when you think about the safety benefits of greater levels of autonomy, what that could do to insurance, what that could ultimately, of course, do just to society. So that the list of, of uh, benefits from adopting uh, higher degrees of uh, autonomy uh, is, is a very, very long, compelling list. It will take some time, however, to play out. We do like the fact that Tesla is focused on this, and certainly in a market that has become more competitive, of course, the EV market globally, these incremental uh, features not only differentiate a vehicle, but as I mentioned, you know, do add potential for significant revenue streams. Uh, they're very profitable revenue streams from a software perspective uh, down the line. But we do think there will be a race for the industry to adopt these incremental technologies going forward. Who do you see as the winner of the autonomy race? Uh, you know, for, for us. So uh, before we hear the answer, there is an obvious answer. It's Tesla. Their lead's unassailable. This is obvious. That is the actual answer. Whether or not people see this, entirely different thing, especially among folks on Wall Street. Is he going to say that? Or is he going to say, well, we don't know. Or is he going to say, well, Cruise and Waymo, they've already had Robotaxis and LiDAR and some other shit, and therefore they're ahead of Tesla, so it's hard to know. Or maybe even reference the upside down autonomy leaderboard. Who knows? So, you know, in the supplier space, uh, we've, we've of course mentioned our, our Mobileye uh, has been a name we, we've liked a lot uh, there because you know, they do have leading technology in a very strong position itself. Uh, obviously, Tesla's kind of doing their own uh, technology and their own approach with FSD, so we're kind of watching their development pace as well. Uh, but it kind of also depends on the, the many kind of ways to win in autonomy. Again, there's, there's focusing on urban robo taxi, very complex but lucrative domains, but there's also other paths we see for focusing on kind of easier domain but one that you can still have pretty compelling business models think about a vehicle that you own that can you know pick up deliveries for you um, or, or do service overnight uh, or even peer-to-peer -peer kind of lending networks that one could uh, develop so you know we like some of the automakers within this who seem to be aggressive uh of course gm and what oh my fucking god i uh, it, i knew it was coming we like some of the automakers he's talking about the legacy mob in terms of autonomy and then, just as I paused, he talked about GM. Remember Cruise, the clusterfuck of clusterfucks? Remember what I said? Glorified party trick. As long as nothing changes, everything's fine. But as soon as an unplanned event occurs, suddenly it becomes a death machine on wheels. A couple of years later, that very scenario plays out. Next minute, Cruise no longer operating due to attempted cover-ups of critical details during an incident involving a pedestrian being dragged under a dumb cruise vehicle. I'm going to let him finish his whole career by... Completing this sentence, I'll see what I did there, it's, it's, it's true. What they're doing on autonomy uh, there as well was, is, is something we're watching for for potential, potential upside. Uh, but the suppliers are some interesting names there as well. So now that we've heard this guy self-immolate and claim that he likes what GM are doing in terms of autonomy via cruise, my spidey sense is tingling. I almost feel like if I go and have a look again at this guy's stock ratings over time, we're probably going to find GM and we're probably going to find buy ratings on GM during the same period of time that he's never once recommended investors buy Tesla stock. If I didn't know any better, I would think that this guy is an automotive analyst who's been covering the automotive industry for a long time, thinks Tesla is just a car company, but then also thinks just a car company, since Tesla's just a car company, other just a car companies who actually are just a car company like GM can easily catch up to or exceed Tesla on autonomy with their own strategy. Therefore, we like what GM's doing in autonomy. So let's see here. I like making these predictions. My spider sense ain't that bad. Let's see... If we dig up his stock coverage, we'll find him A, covering GM, probably Ford and other legacy companies. In addition, let's see if there's at least one buy rating in the same span of time. There hasn't been a single buy rating on Tesla stock, but at least one. Let's see if he's got at least one on GM, if not more than one. This is going to be good. Okay, back to that tab I had open. Still on Tesla. Let's see if we can find GM here. How did I fucking know? GM, buy. Ford, buy. If I could drop my mic right now, I would, but it's on a stand, so I can't. God damn it. This was just so obvious. Now, what's really interesting here, according to tip ranks, the guy sees GM stock more than doubling or believes it's worth more than double what it's currently available for. The same company he just talked up in terms of their <laughs> autonomous strategy. 
And he's he's got a bow. Right. This is just too good to be true. How did I know, bro? How did I know? Let's have a look at Ford first. We'll start we'll start with Ford. Just just funny feeling. And here we go. What, what a surprise here. Telling investors to start buying Ford in mid twenty twenty three as the wheels are falling off. The company's slashing prices, cutting back production targets, and now the big one, the big reveal. Where'd you go, GM? Here we are. <laughs> this is gonna be good. Click the tenure. <laughs> I fucking knew it. God damn it, you can't make this stuff up. I kind of was setting this up because I had a funny feeling there might be more than one buy rating. Nothing but buy ratings on GM the entire fucking time. This is, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I roast a lot of folks on Wall Street constantly. Every single rating on GM since 2019, the only coverage that's available here the whole time, buy, 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 buy. The whole time, buy. And during essentially the same time frame, actually the same time frame, I think, Tesla, sell, 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 and then eventually hold, 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 hold. Not one buy rating on Tesla that entire fucking time, yet nothing but buy ratings on government motor stock, a company who are obviously going bankrupt with an incompetent leader. I feel so bad for this guy. The fact that I was able to predict ahead of time what he would have been saying about GM historically, I mean, anyway, the guy seems to believe that there's some potential around autonomy, but also is deluding himself into thinking that GM have a winning strategy here. Not seeing Tesla's unassailable lead. This is really awkward. <laughs> I just can't believe this shit, bro. Oh, wait. Don't tell me. You know what? This is going to be the best. What are the odds that he once possibly recommended investors buy Fisker stock? You know, the second coming, first version goes bankrupt. What are the odds? By the way, they're about to go bankrupt. This will just be too delicious to be true. There's no way, right? Is he that dumb? Surely this guy wouldn't have been dumb enough to ever recommend. If he did, that's it's career over, right? There's no way. What do you guys think? Before I click, do you reckon he'll have ever recommended investors? I mean, he can't be that dumb to have recommended anyone buy a Fisker stock once, right? That'd be like Nikola. But let's click. Let's find out. Holy shit! Okay, I'm officially retiring. I'm, I'm, this is peak me. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Holy shit. I can't believe this dude. The guy's recommending investors buy anal Fisker stock. What, when it was 28 and a half dollars a share? Still recommending buying, what is it today? Two cents? <laughs> Pro tip, nobody should take anything this guy ever says about anything regarding electric vehicles or autonomy seriously, ever. This is outrageous. I feel like this is an April Fool's page, but <laughs> bro, I'm just going to check in case he's ever covered Nikola. That would be the all-time classic, but let's, I doubt it. I mean, surely not, right? Let's have a look, just in case. Let's see. Can we get Nikola? Jeez. Oh, let me guess. What are the odds that there's been a buy rating on Lucid? I'm going to come back to that. I want to find Nikola if he's ever covered that because that would just be too good. Scroll, scroll. All right, let's just double check with the search. Apparently no coverage of Nikola. All right, we have to look at Lucid, right? Because after all, given this dumb fuck, I just want to make sure everyone got that dumb fuck, had recommended not only people buy GM consistently since 2019, but more importantly, Fisker, Jesus Christ, dude. Surely, now that we understand enough about the potato cognition happening here, there's definitely going to be a buy rating on Lucid at least one as well, right? Probably near the peak. Let's find out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I rest my fucking case. Buy Lucid, $55.52 per share. Not one buy rating on Tesla since 2019. And this dumb fuck, the end. I just I got nothing else to add. Oh shit, I was too busy dropping the mic to check back in on this poll, as promised. Well, here we are after, what, just over 1,200 votes. This should be pretty representative of the final results within a few tenths of a percent for each option, the power of large numbers. So final voting in, 28% of poll respondents just wanted to see the results. So we'll round it and say roughly three quarters of the people already own a Tesla. Interesting insight into my audience, at least those who voted on this poll. Of them, a fraction aren't buying FSD after the price decrease, either because it's too much or they don't want it. More than double that number already have FSD and almost double that number are now going to buy or subscribe to FSD monthly due to the price decrease. So Potentially some big implications here. Like I said, you can't extrapolate my audience to the general owners of Teslas. But interesting indication how price sensitive consumers are to this software. I wonder what Wall Street is going to think about this and how it may increase take rates. Just remember, folks, that this is free money for Tesla. It's a fucking button press, okay? They've already made the software. This is essentially pure profit straight to the bottom line. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more 
and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. You get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link in the pinned comment, See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.